Welcome back, it's Smash Boss here and today I wanted to showcase my latest level which is the second level that I made specifically for the multiplayer versus mode. However, this level is a lot different than my last versus mode level because my last level was basically just a normal level. Of course, I thought about the versus mode when I was making it, however, the level was always the same in single player mode or in multiplayer mode. But in this level there are two separate paths and depending on if the level is played in single player or multiplayer, only one of those paths will open up. And just to quickly get the single player path out of the way, this is this pipe right here because the single player path is essentially again just a normal level and the reason why this path only opens up in single player I will explain all of this later but just to get it out of the way you end up in this pipe if you play it in single player this basically directly leads to that pipe over here there you also get a checkpoint so you don't have to do the beginning section every time and then it's really just a normal level could also be a normal like story mode level or whatever and then you go in this key door and get to the flagpole however the multiplayer path is something completely different but first of all let's start by explaining this setup right here which I use to determine if the level is played in single player mode or multiplayer mode. So first of all this setup right here is also the reason why it took me so long to make this level because all the other parts of the level were already in my mind quite a while ago. However I never really had a 100% trustworthy setup when it comes to detecting if the level is played in single player or multiplayer. I recently showcased one level called player counter that basically did this and it really worked 100% of the time. However, this level used Yoshi X in order to count the number of players. So since Yoshi X are not available in Super Mario Bros, I sadly had to come up with something else. And in theory, the setup that I came up with should work in all of the four main styles. Like 3D World is sadly so different that it doesn't have all the necessary items and things like for example tracks that are required for the setup. But all the other game styles should work. And I'm also aware of that there are a lot of other levels and setups that try to do the same thing. However, all the other setups that I know rely on one simple assumption that sounds logically, but in my opinion was never really proven to be true. And that is the assumption that if something hits a question mark block that contains a power up, in multiplayer that it will release all its power-ups like one power-up per player at once and all the power-ups will then spread in different directions. The reason why I believe that people think that's how it works is because of local multiplayer because that's the way it works in local multiplayer. However, there's several instances where local multiplayer is actually different from actual online multiplayer because in local multiplayer even if the player himself hits a block that contains a power up it will release all the power ups at once and that's something that I know does not happen in online multiplayer so that's why I and the one hand cannot be 100% sure that it works like that but on the other hand I can also not 100% tell that it works not like that so in order to build a setup that really is reliable no matter what I just had to cover 
all of the possible options and there's one thing that I can be sure about no matter in what type of multiplayer the level is played and that is that there are multiple power-ups in a block if it's played in multiplayer so it doesn't matter in this setup if they are all released at once or not however as long as there are multiple power-ups in this block it will always work so first of all I had to cover the option that even though I don't think that's actually how it works that it could still be the case that all the power-ups are released at once and that's done by this shell that hits the block the first time so that's luckily also the case that I can test in local multiplayer because as I said in local multiplayer that's actually how it works so in single player this block will always release only one mushroom which will then go along until it falls down here and then it will bounce up this way and get stuck in this pit right here on this area so if the block is hit and all power-ups would come out at once if at least two mushrooms come out at the same time they will travel like really close to each other both inside this little pit right here and if there are at least two mushrooms like directly one after another then one mushroom will bounce right here and the other mushroom will bounce right here so if that's the way it works then the mushroom that will bounce to this side will then go along here and hit this block which will release a muncher to explode this bob omp right here so then the launcher on top can fall and block the single player path and open the multiplayer path which is this door right here at first this second launcher that is down here will not even spawn since at the beginning this block right here is still there and spawn blocks it that launcher just comes in handy later however there's still the other option to cover what if the block does not release all the mushrooms at once because if only one mushroom is released each time the block is hit every mushroom would be too far away from the next one to like affect the direction in which the mushrooms bounce so all mushrooms would end up in this area right here however that's the rest of the setup that covers this option so right here this platform will move the launcher with the bomb on top of it on top of this block by the time it has been hit once so that means that if it has been hit once and it didn't release all the mushrooms yet that there are still mushrooms inside of it so the next time it's hit the launcher with the bomb will be on top of it and if there are still mushrooms inside of this block then it's not an empty block which means that when it's hit again it will at least bounce up and down and that will then destroy the bomb which will in consequence break this block so that the muncher drops right here and then the muncher is the thing that falls down here and hits this contraption so this setup works no matter what and after the first player enters this door right here a piece which will immediately get hit and then there are the four classic multiplayer pipes I also have the second piece switch right here that is hit with a short delay after the first one that's just to make sure that every player has the chance to reach one of his pipes because the way the bob omp is placed right here at the beginning it could happen that if one player directly runs into the bob omp at the beginning of the level that he immediately dies so to make sure that even a player that died directly in the beginning and respawned still has enough time to make it on top of his pipe I included this a little bit longer than just one piece switch timer of course 
if two players or more enter the same pipe, the level can still be broken. However, luckily that's one thing that most multiplayer players understand. If they see a room like this, normally there's not the case that many players enter the same pipe. That's luckily something that most people seem to understand. So there's no 100% guarantee that this will work, but I guess most people will do what they're supposed to do in this situation. So then, let's check out the actual multiplayer level and what it actually So right here, I tried to use the popular level called Mario Table Tennis vs. Computer and tried to make a multiplayer stage out of this idea because basically you have like one table tennis bat to kick the ball back and forth. However, in the computer version that was in my opinion I think also in the star rankings at the first place at some point. So I guess a lot of people will know how this concept works. There was like just the second one was just moving up and down on a track or by its own. However, here both players can control their own table tennis bats like themselves by hitting this on and off switch. I used an on and off switch here because, well, if I use the question mark block, you could only hit it a limited amount of times. And if I used a normal block, it might still break if for whatever reason the P switch is still running when there's like somebody in this room, then this block might just turn into a coin. And since the on off blocks have no use in the multiplayer path, I just used the switches to have a block that can be hit an infinite amount of times without the risk of breaking anything. So the way it works is basically just like in the real multiplayer level. If you try or if you manage to get the shell into the goal of the opponent, it will at least, at first it will kill this piranha plant, then this, and the third time you manage to hit the shell into the goal right here, it will go all the way down and since there is no room to escape, it will definitely kill the other player that is standing right here before it releases the key from this block. And this key will then either immediately go to you since you were the one that technically hit the block or it will go in the bubble and since you're the closest player it will always travel to you anyways. So that's how you have like a three health system so every player has three lives or like two extra lives and then his actual life. So the first player that tries to or manages to get three shells into the enemy's goal will then kill his opponent and be rewarded with a key. The exact same thing is for the blue and orange pipe on the other side of the level. I really tried to put them as far away from each other as possible just to make really sure that if the key goes in a bubble that it will go to the closest player. So, And since this is all the way on one side of the level it would be really annoying or awkward if the key went all the way to the other side of the level just to go to one of these players. So. That's why I put them so far away from each other. So then, in the middle, we have the waiting for the finals room, which is another safety launcher right here. So if the first one doesn't stop players from re-entering, at least once they're right here, they should not be able to enter the finals like after two players are actually in the finals already. People that are respawning should not be able to break the level after that. So first of all, these blocks are like 
still there, so the launchers won't spawn. So those are the key doors from the left side right here. So if either red or green wins the semi-finals, they will come out at this side. So they can trigger this thwomp up here, which will destroy some of the blocks, but not all of them. On the other hand, if one player wins the other semi-finals, they destroy these blocks up here by triggering this thwomp. And so, no matter what, both thwomps have to be triggered in order that the muncher can go all the way through and hit the p-switch which will land somewhere about here. That means that at least one person has to be like in the grand finals from each semi-finals match before the finals can even be started because of course if like these two players are finished way faster than the other two then the one that won this matchup right here could just go to the finals room immediately and win against a non-existent opponent. So this is all just to make sure that there has to be one player on this side and one player on that side before the finals can start. And then in the subworld or in the main area basically that's where the finals take place. There's like one more of these multiplayer table tennis rooms and this time the room is basically the same but a little bit different. For example, the cannon is now red so that means that the shell will be a lot faster than in the semifinals. And so whoever won on the one semifinals will end up here. And whoever won the other semi-finals will end up here and basically they will do the same thing. They will fight until there's only one player left and then the other player will get the key. And both key doors then go up here and also lead to the goal. So that's how all of this works. That's it for today and I hope you enjoyed the video.